A little while ago I bought a cheap automatic watering pump for my greenhouse to try and keep my greenhouse plants alive while well, I'm going to be away for a little break. It turned out to be faulty. It's got a leak in the diaphragm inside this pump. And in fact, here are all the parts of that pump strewn about me. Anyway, I ordered a replacement and today a parcel has arrived. This one I bought from eBay and I paid £17.89 for it uh, with free postage and it arrived in a few days. I paid a bit more this time even though it's obviously the same pump, it's obviously the same source, all of the product images are in fact the same ones that I saw on AliExpress. So it's obviously the same unit and from the same place ultimately, but this came from UK stock because it got here in just a few days. So this seller is presumably just buying a few of them and selling them on to me at a profit which is fine. The previous one took a month to get here. This one I've paid a bit more and got it a bit quicker. Anyway, let's open this one up and see what we got. Okay, so same box as before, although this time it's got an export sticker on it. So obviously that's been officially exported as a consignment whereas this one came directly from China. There's no markings on the box. So clearly that one has been packaged for the export market. I'm just going to clear everything else away so we don't get confused about what came in what box. Just to say the unboxing of this one and all of the waffle about what it's supposed to do, how it's supposed to work and so on, I'm going to skip through pretty briefly because we did cover that in great depth in the previous video and I don't feel like subjecting you to the same amount of waffle. So we'll crack on with that and this video will focus mostly on the testing and then the operation and setup, assuming it does work this time. Okay, so as before, now that's packaged slightly differently. So as before we've got a metal clip, we've got the pump and instructions, not wet this time, and a little tea piece. We've got some silicone tubing, and from experience that will be two meters of silicone tubing. And we've got two four-way connectors with the little watering spigots. Those are different. So that's got kind of soft rubber tubing there. Previously, the set that was in the box was the same soft rubber tubing. The additional set they've sent me is slightly harder, more glossy, and feels a little bit more flimsy rubber tubing. Same kind of setup, but the tubing on this one feels a bit less resilient than that one. Anyway, anyway, so it's got some power in it this time, which is a hopeful sign. The previous one didn't even turn on when I first got it because it was wet inside already. So I do think still that the problem with this one is that it was tested and put away after testing and there was still and the reason the instructions were wet is because there was water inside the case rather than inside these nozzles. I suspect probably their testing process dries out the pump after testing. Anyway, it's looking hopeful that this will work. I'm going to go and get some water and we'll give it a test. I'm going to use I'm going to use the short pieces of tubing I cut from the previous model. I don't really see any point in cutting up this tubing for the test because I'll use this tubing for the actual final setup. Right, that's the in, that's the out, so in on the left. I'm going to set it for, it's upside down, I'm going to set it for 15 seconds. It won't do anything because it's set for zero days at the moment, but after two seconds after I set that to one day, we should see it spring into action. And indeed we do. Okay, so that's how much water it has pumped in 15 seconds. It's pumped 400 mil of water. Not bad. Obviously there's nothing on there at the moment to restrict the flow. It hasn't got these little nozzles, it hasn't got a whole lot of piping and stuff on there to restrict the flow. 
but the manner in which I'm planning to set this up means that it will probably still achieve that volume of pumping because I'm not going to pump these things directly. I'm actually going to use this pump to lift water from a big tank into a temporary reservoir that's elevated and then that reservoir will drain into the watering nozzles. And we don't have any evidence of leaking elsewhere. It's yeah, just a lot more solid. I am tempted to take this apart and see the condition of the motor in there, but I really don't want to mess around with this. It's a working unit. Now I have also bought some additional silicone tubing. I got this on eBay. I uh, bought five meters of silicone tubing. It's a slightly thicker gauge. The wall thickness is greater. I think this is two millimeters instead of one millimeter. It does fit on the pump. I'm going to use this thicker tubing for the intake so that the vacuum this pump creates is less likely to collapse this tube. I'm also going to be using the additional connectors that I've got because obviously all the bits and pieces I got from that previous set are usable even though I got my money back but I've got some spare bits and pieces and tubing and all sorts of things to use now. The other thing to say is that I've Plug this into charge and it is indicating that it's charging, which the other thing didn't do. So I am reasonably confident that we've got a fully working unit here. One more thing I just want to test is I've got this on charge. I am a tiny, tiny little bit skeptical of the 60 days claim. They say this thing on a charge will last for up to two months, I think, or 60 days or whatever they said anyway. But I am a tiny bit skeptical that this lithium battery is enough to keep this pump going for 60 days worth of cycles unless they're very very short cycles so what i've got what i've done i've got it on charge and i'm testing here whether it will still activate when it's on charge because i can plug a solar panel into this and it will charge from the solar panel i want to know though whether that's going to interrupt the cycle so i'm going to set it for five seconds one day and we wait two seconds Okay, so yeah, that does work definitely when it's on charge. I suppose what we'll also test here is, will it pump when there's nothing to pump? It will. So I think, as somebody noted in the comments, I think the whole idea of it being having protection against loss of water is actually just a statement that it doesn't explode if it doesn't have water. The pump still runs, but it pumps air instead. So I don't think it's actually got a sensor in there to detect that the water's out. I think it just doesn't matter if the water runs out, doesn't break the pump, or well, that's the claim. And it turns out when it's fully charged, it really does say OF on the display. I thought that was a typo in the instructions, but apparently not. Well, that was interesting. I took this outside for a test. I was going to test it with four nozzles and then with eight. And the plan was to put one nozzle in a smaller jug and three nozzles in a larger jug and then connect it all up and test it to see if the water distribution was even. Unfortunately, I ended up killing this and it's my fault, but I think it's actually quite a easy mistake to make. I'll show you what happened. I connected it all up with a piece of tubing that went down into a 40 litre water tank. And then I connected the output hose to the end of the four-way splitter that goes off to the four nozzles. Hung it on the side, set it for daily at 30 seconds, and after the two-second interval, it kicked in and started trying to pump water. Unfortunately, there was a kink in the output hose. And it's actually very easy to do. I'll show you what happened here. So this is one of the output hose things. This is the pipe that they supplied. And as you can see, it's just ever so easy for this pipe to get kinked if there's a little bit of a bend in the system. The additional pipe that I bought separately doesn't kink nearly so easily when it bends. It does kink if you bend it tightly, but it's not so prone to kinking just from being bent. Obviously, just because it's got a thicker wall. Now, what happened there is that kink prevented the outflow from, from the output valve. The pump ran for a few seconds and then stalled and then went quiet and so what we've got now this thing still 
operates, the electronics still work, but when I set it to pump, it counts down as if it's pumping, but there is no sound of the pump. The pump's not running. So I think I've killed it. I think probably one of two things has happened. Either the motor stalled from the pressure and one of the motor windings has burned out, or something that drives the motor has burned out. I suppose actually a third possibility is something has kicked in to protect overcurrent protection. Something has kicked in that maybe might reset if we could disconnect the power, but there is no isolator switch for this. You can't turn this off unless you open it up and remove the battery connector. I'm going to try that now. I'm actually going to see if these little plugs come out without drilling out. Since we are here anyway, it looks like we're doing another tear down. I'm going to just see if I can pick these plugs out. Yeah, I don't think they are welded in actually. I think probably what happened in the previous tear down is when I was drilling them out, I probably, yeah, I, I think the drilling drove the plastic into the screw heads. So I don't think these were actually welded in. I think they're just press fit. They're not designed to come out, of course, but we will get them out. There we go. Okay, tear down time. Again, a little bit easier this time, since the screw heads are not full of melted plastic. I mean, the plus side of this is I'm learning about will, what will and will not be suitable for my garden. And also, I think we get an opportunity here to see what the motor looks like when it's new, i.e. when it's not been stored wet. So, top comes off. Uh, for comparison, here's the previous circuit board, yeah, and you can see water damage around there. In fact, all over, you can see bits of water damage at the edge of the PCB where the water's kind of soaked into the edge of the board. It's clipped in. Ah, now, interesting, the battery comes out of this one, and there's a lot more glue on the battery, but also look at their motor by comparison. Um, so, pretty sure that the previous one I had had been wet for a while. Anyway, there's the pump and the motor. I'm going to take that glue off of that connector and just disconnect the battery. Got it. Now, my sincere hope is that resetting it like this might reset whatever component. If there is some kind of cutout device, overcurrent protection built into the circuit, it might be that unplugging it for a moment or two will reset that. Not tremendously hopeful. Okay, so that's the day, that's the minutes, that's the seconds rather, that's the day. Let's see if that runs the pump. No, it doesn't. So I think I've blown something up, probably blown up the little thing that drives the motor, a little MOSFET or something probably that drives the motor. And I suspect I've busted it. So what I'm going to do, just going to check, just going to carefully open these, this casing. Now I don't want to destroy this pump because I might be able to transplant this pump onto the other board. Not that I'm sure I want to trust my garden to this little device because it just seems like getting a kink in the hose there is something that's actually quite likely to happen really. In normal operation so any reasonable device ought to be able to cope with that right what I'm going to do is just try and run that without the pump attached ah interesting so has the pump stalled hmm Maybe I just need to put it back together carefully now. I wonder if the motor had just kind of maybe oxidized a little bit of the brushes or something. It's possible that if the motor stalled, it might have created a little oxide spot on the commutator. And that might have prevented the motor from starting. Possible. 
But as I say, I'm not very sure that I want to trust my watering to this device because it just seems like kinking the hose like that is something that's quite likely to happen in normal operation, although I can replace it with this thicker silicone tubing here and minimize that. And actually the way I've got the way I plan to set this up will hopefully minimize that as well. Maybe I just need something that's a bit different to this. Difficulty I've got is there's no mains water or power at my greenhouse and it's not gonna not really something I can very practically lay on. Uh, it's just the greenhouse is quite a way away from the house. There is an outside tap but it's downstairs and this is the upstairs greenhouse this needs to sort out. And as I say there's no mains power. So I really need something that not only runs off of battery power but is able to pump from a reservoir of water. And those solutions are surprisingly few. Well, I say surprisingly few, they're not actually. There are numerous solutions for that, but they're really all devices like this. I'm not gonna bother putting those little plugs back in because I've, I've mashed them up anyway. And also I might need to open this again. Right, I think I might have just got that working again. I am going to go and do some more testing a bit more carefully this time. Right, well, that was interesting because I went out and set it all up and ran it again. I was very careful not to kink the hose and it didn't work. It counted down, but I heard no pump running. I did have some little clips on the output hoses, but they're not restricting the flow. They were just there to stop the things from jumping out of place. Right, can't see any damage in there. I'll put that back together for the moment. I just tried running this, I thought maybe I'd put the screws in too tight, but I just, so I've just tried running this without that and it didn't make any difference. So next I'm going to try running it now with just the motor. It's very interesting, the failure mode of this just seems to be... Right, let's see if the motor runs now. So we'll set it for two seconds and one day. No. Nothing. Okay, now I'm just going to try turning the motor a little bit to there. Does that make a difference? No. So I don't know what I've done here. Some weird combination of factors. Yeah, definitely not. Ah, that motor is trying to work. So I think what's happened is there's a motor, a motor winding has burned out. So if I just set that to, I don't know, 20 seconds. So that motor's not doing anything, even though, right, so it's counting down. That motor's not doing anything. But when I try to turn it, There are places in its rotation where it's trying to do something. It's very strange because that motor seems to work okay when it starts going. But I don't think I'm going to be able to trust this now. I think it is my fault. I think I've probably broken it by whatever I did when I ran it with too much back pressure. As I say, I am going to make excuses for myself because I think that's a really easy thing to do. And I think it's a very likely thing to happen in normal operation. So I think I'm probably going to have to look for some other device for my watering requirements, uh, which is difficult because as I say, there isn't, doesn't seem to be anything on the market that isn't either just a variation on this idea at approximately this level of quality. It's the independence of mains, water and power so I don't mind spending a bit more money. I don't want to spend. So I don't want to spend the kind of money it will take to run mains, water, and power to the greenhouse, or even one of those things to the greenhouse. Okay, right. Let's just try that now with the pump back in one piece and one, three seconds, four seconds, two days. 
Right, well, it tried to run now. I could I could just hear it stop. I did have some interesting feedback on the tear down of the pump. Some people said that's not a diaphragm pump, it's a swash plate pump. And it's actually both. That is a kind of swash plate type mechanism, but it's definitely a diaphragm pump. It's five little diaphragms driven by something that's not unlike a, sw a swash plate. A swash plate pump would normally have pistons. This has got a diaphragm. Some people did actually say that this is not designed for water, this pump, it's designed for air. I don't know if that's true or not. It's not really easy to research because you try and find people selling these pumps um, online and it's the same kind of marketplaces as the as every, everything else. It's basically they'll tell you what they think you want to hear rather than the truth about the product. Anyway, so that's disappointing. I've now got to go and see if there's another solution. I could homebrew something. I could go and get, I don't I think Raspberry Pi is probably overkill for something that's just turning on and off a water pump several times a day or week or whatever. I could do, do it with Arduino and a relay or a MOSFET or something like that and a uh, battery operated pond pump but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to put that all together in time for when I need this to work I may end up having to pay some local urchin to come and water my plants yeah I'm going to say damaged damaged brushes burnt out the motor and if only this motor wasn't quite so darn rusty, I could maybe just swap them out. But I really don't think that's a good idea. I mean, let's see if this thing still runs. Now it's had a chance to sit dried out. Yeah, the buttons are damaged on here, so let's try that two seconds every two days. Yeah, that works. But you can tell that motor's not tremendously happy. Okay, well, I mean, actually, rather than... Let's just try putting this pump on that motor. Hopefully that'll be all right. All right, so... When reassembling plastic parts like this with metal screws, it's always a good idea before you drive the screw to back it up just until you hear a click and then drive it forward. Just let it find its thread. Otherwise, what you can end up doing is unfortunately cutting a new thread in the plastic with the screw and then eventually there'll be no plastic left there to grip anything. It's always a good idea just to back them up a little bit. You'll hear a little click as it f finds the thread, and then you're good to go. <laughs> One day, two seconds. Well, that seems to be working. Not tremendously confident about that because that's the rusty old motor and the damaged circuit board from the other other device but anyway we shall assemble it and then see if we can do an actual test where it doesn't blow up okay so that configuration worked except I'm not really happy with using the old circuit board and old motor with the new pump I'd rather have done that the other way around but this motor's duff, like I say, my fault, but there it is. I don't think the brushes are replaceable in that, so that's a, a lost cause, that one. Now, it's, the test results were interesting. I started off with just four nozzles. I put three of them in one jug and one in another. And at the end of pumping, the volume in the larger jug was roughly three times the amount of water in the smaller jug, which was the thing I was testing was do these things evenly distribute the water. They do seem to. I repeated that with eight nozzles and again seven in one jug one in the other and I did get more or less again an even distribution of water 
slightly lower volume that time, I suppose just because it has more work to do pushing it along those pipes. I then just tried the pump on its own in an elevated position, just pumping water straight up out of the tank into the jug. Now what's interesting here is it's having to draw the water up that pipe about a metre before it deposits it in the jug and I got about 600 mil of water that way. I tried it the other way, I put the pump just right down at the water level and let it pump the water up to the jug. I got about 800 mil of water that way so the pump is definitely more efficient pushing water up a pipe than it is trying to suck water up a pipe because it's not a vacuum pump it's a fluid pump. Anyway, I don't know what to do next. I think probably my configuration in the greenhouse will consist of one or more of these little pumps. I might have to go and buy another couple of them now and treat them a bit better than I've treated these. But I think what I will do is I'm going to have a reservoir. I'm going to have a raised reservoir with all of these feeder pipes going down from it. And I'm just going to use the pump to pump water up into the temporary reservoir. So it's going to go from the big tank it's going to charge the reservoir with a measured amount of water and then the reservoir is just going to drain via gravity down to all of the watering points. That's my plan. So I've got this little pump and I've got all of this tubing from actually two sets. So I've got, I think, probably 16, I've got 24 watering spikes now, plus a whole load of silicone tubing, some of which came with the pump, some of which I bought on eBay separately. So I've got plenty of stuff to water the plants. So I've got plenty of stuff to set up watering the plants, except from my test, it's clear that this little pump is not quite beefy enough to be able to overcome things like kinks in the pipe. And also the more that's more of a network that's connected to it, the less it's going to pump in total volume. So to overcome that, I just want to use this to lift water to a elevated reservoir. So this pump is only got to overcome gravity. And then gravity is going to do the watering down through the pipes from the reservoir. So I want a big plastic bottle that I can hang up near the top of the greenhouse. I went out for a stroll and I found this in a ditch. This is a uh, how much capacity? Two and a half litre bottle. That I think will do. The pump will pump four litres when it's on full setting but of course whilst it's filling this it can also be draining down to the plant so I reckon we can probably get a full fill from this. The only problem is how do we attach the tube to the bottle? Well I was going to drill a hole in there and put a piece of silicone tubing through and then pour some more silicone around it as it came up through, pour, pour a bit of silicone in there and make a kind of stopper and then I kind of realized this other bottle that I also found in a ditch has got a spout on it already and it just happens to be the case that the threads are compatible on these bottles. So there we go. So there's already a, a nozzle there that will work and it looks like just about the right diameter for a push fit on this silicone tubing. If necessary I can still put a bit of hot glue or something around the inside. I need to take out that little triangular piece there. Anyway, first thing to do I think is go up to the greenhouse and set up all of the watering pipes so that they all branch correctly and all come back to one pipe. Okay, well that is the no, probably not final configuration. So we've got four, four, another four, and then two lots of four here. So that branches into those two, that branches into there, same on that side, and then they eventually join up the top here. So one feed of water into there which is a tiny little nozzle so it will only drip but the tank is going to go up the top here and then that will discharge hopefully with some kind of fairness to all of the plants down the bottom here that's the theory all right to hold this water tank up i'm thinking some sort of wire cradle so i've got this wire I'll just put that on there because it will be easier to work with this when it's got air inside it a couple of twists that side, nice, nice and tight. So a couple of twists on opposite sides. Nice little rim there, which will hold that in place. Something like that. That seems to be working. Perhaps just a little bit over-engineered, but I don't want it falling down when I'm not here.
messy, but it'll work. And then I've got these things, which drive into the, these go into the slots inside the greenhouse. So you turn that into a, like there's a channel, you put it in there. A bit like the stuff that fits on Maker Slide. And that'll give me a nice eyelet to hang this up. Like that. And that will hang it up in such a way that the water drains out the bottom. I used my step drill to cut three holes in the end of the bottle here. I cut it into the thicker plastic here because it won't tear so easily. If I cut a hole inside here, well I lose some capacity anyway, but there's a risk of this material tearing. Up here it's a little bit stronger. I've cut three holes so that we can let air in when the water's coming out and let air out when the water's filling in, if that makes sense. Okay, so here is the system kind of final configuration. So we've got a water tank on a concrete block there just to give it a bit more elevation so the pump just doesn't have to do quite so much work lifting the water up. The output of the pump goes up. We'll have a look at the tank in a minute. The input of the pump goes straight down into that water tank. So it's going to be pushing water up that pipe, which is what we found to be more efficient than drawing it up. So the header tank is up there. And as we've already discussed, that's going to be draining as it's filling. So I reckon I can probably run it for the full 199 seconds and we'll get our four litres of water or whatever even though that bottle is only two and a half litres because by the time it's putting the second lot of two litres in, the first lot should hopefully have watered all the plants. All of the joints I've secured with twist ties just to keep that pipe from popping off of there and hopefully to mitigate any leaks that were seeping out of these rather loose junctions. So the silicone pipe is pulled tight onto all of the fittings. Right, only one thing left to do now, which is fire it up and see what happens. So I'm going to set it for, well, let's set it for 100 seconds to start with and we'll see what we get. It should start pumping two seconds after I stop configuring. Okay, that's that. Let's hang that up there and there it goes. It hardly even needs that header tank actually. It's draining down into all of the places. It's looking pretty good. No leaks from anywhere. And if we look closely, I'm going to inspect all of these junctions, but if we look closely, we can see water going in both directions at these joints. I will inspect them all carefully. And if we look down here at ground level, we can see water trickling out of the spout there. The pump's now finished its 100 seconds and the system will drain itself down. I think that worked. Now I think I absolutely do need to elevate these pipes a little bit just so that it has a fair chance when it's like that I have a feeling this tighter path here is getting more water than the lower one so I, I need to just lift those up a little bit to just make it fair on the watering apart from that I think we're good and this obviously this isn't the main watering for this greenhouse this is kind of like a life support system for if I have to spend the night away this header tank did drain down a lot quicker than I expected it to and I think that might just be this new nozzle where it's not having to go through a constricted bit of pipe here that's stretched over the outside of that nozzle. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pinch that pipe like that and just run the pump for a few seconds just to fill some water into the bottle and we'll see what it looks like if it does actually fill. Now we can get an appreciation for how fast it's filling this up. So this is a two and a half litre bottle. So that's about a litre in 50 seconds. Well, that's the end of the cycle. That was 100 seconds. I would say that's close on two litres. So I think it's actually living up to its specification. Right, I'm going to let that go now and we'll see how quickly that drains down. And now when the pipes are full, it doesn't drain down nearly quite so quickly. That's interesting. So when there's actually liquid in the pipe and there's no air bubbling past back past it, it seems to water a bit more slowly. Interesting. Well, OK, I think jobs are good as far as it can be. That is going to keep my tomato plants from dying while I'm away. It may not give them as much water as I would if I was here, but hopefully it will keep them from dying. Now, one thing with this little pump is I'm quite sceptical that that single 18650 cell in there will last especially when it's on a long duty cycle so when this is on 199 seconds 
I think that pump will exhaust that battery rather too quickly. So, solar panel. And this is just a panel that's got a USB outlet, so I can plug that directly into the charging port on that pump. And I've already tested that it will function when it's charging. Charging will not interrupt the uh, operation of the timer. Fortunately, there is abundant sunlight here in the greenhouse, but we'll just give this a little test. Okay. And it's saying on. I don't know if you can see that. Which means even there, with me standing over the solar panel, it's just getting ambient reflected light. It's still charging. So that's good. Let's put that down to there. And then we'll hang this up somewhere where it can get a bit of light. Something like that. And that's already gone to off. It's already charged up the battery. So the only kind of unsolved problem for longer term watering is, does this produce enough volume? So I could add another pump and I could pump from another tank. Maybe I could pump feed in the morning and water in the evening. I might even do that. I might use this as a feed tank and get my other pump and feed into the same bottle and drainage system and drips and everything. And then we can have a big water in the evening and a small feed in the morning or vice versa or whatever. Anyway, that's all set up now. This pump unit still is the hybrid. So this is made from the rusty old circuit board and motor and the new pump, which I'm not terribly happy with. So I've ordered some more parts and I'm also going to order a different pump anyway, because I think this might not be big enough capacity. But anyway, that uh, looks like it's going to work. So I'm going to leave that in place and monitor it over a few days. But I think that's probably as far as this video needs to go. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.